Dr. Masaru Imoto, who is an expert in the study of water. Now, I want to qualify, Dr. Imoto is not a Christian. He's not a believer. He's a researcher. He's a scientist. He's an expert in water molecular studies. And his research, interestingly, has confirmed many things that the Bible has been teaching for thousands of years concerning the invisible realm. What makes Dr. Imoto famous is his research in the effects of music and words upon water molecules. That what we think and feel and believe and say do affect our physical realities. And by the way, distilled water cannot form crystals. He exposed it to music and words for periods of time. He then froze a small amount of water in a very cold room, forming ice, and just before the ice melts, he put those ice under powerful microscopes and used high-speed photography, and he could see the types of crystal fall as a result of being impacted by vibrations of music and physical vibrations of the words. Now, remember, distilled water doesn't form crystals. So when you see crystals forming, it is out of the natural. So when distilled water was exposed to Beethoven's pastoral symphony, Dr. Imoto found beautiful crystals were formed. When distilled water was exposed to Mozart's 40th symphony, crystals created were delicate and elegant. And when water was exposed to Bach, it was as if the crystal was dancing merrily. Now, what's interesting is this. When water was exposed to Elvis Presley's Heartbreak Hotel, the crystal div divided into two parts as if to mimic the song, as if a heart's been broken. <laughs> On the other hand, when water was bombarded by violent, heavy metal music, it didn't form crystals at all. Instead, all it displayed was chaotic, fragmented structures, asymmetrical structures or patterns with dull colors. But the stunner was in the next thing. Dr. Imodo took it to another level. He wanted to see the impact of human words spoken over distilled water. So he, he took jugs of water, distilled water, and started speaking. And he found this. Words like love and gratitude gave elaborate brilliant six-sided hexagonal crystals and and he spoke words like thank you thank you thank you the words thank you gave stunning beautiful crystals and these are the crystals in different languages of thank you the word angel make crystals birth forth in a multitude of flowers on the other hand when negative words like you fool when, when words like, you fool, and, and words that are spoken again and again, you fool, you fool, you fool, you stupid, you are hopeless. They found that no crystals was formed. And worse still, words like, you are ugly, gave hideous looking crystals. And he tried out in Japanese the word, Satan produced very ugly crystals with a dark lump in the center, making them look sinister and menacing. And words or phrases like, you make me sick, I will kill you. They form no crystals at all. It's just everything was disintegrated. So the result was the same when he used words in different languages. He tried in Korean, in Chinese, in English, in Spanish, in Italian. They came out with the same result. He went to pictures. So when water was exposed to the photograph of an innocent cute baby, the water came back with beautiful crystals. And when the water was exposed to a photo with, of a beautiful sunrise, it gave brilliant crystals with stunning colors. Dr. Imodo now went even further. And he tried experimenting with no verbal words, but just with thoughts. So he got his team and they intentionally focused their thoughts their feelings, and they focus positive thoughts and feelings upon this water for weeks and for months, and beautiful crystals will fall. 
And when negative thoughts and emotions are focused on it, deformed crystals will form or there were no crystals at all. In 1997, some samples were taken from Fujiwara Dam in Japan. And the crystals created were very ugly. Dr. Emoto got curious. And one of the leaders in the community came to him and said just a week ago, a woman committed suicide. And she killed herself in a nearby lake that was connected to the dam. And so the crystal that was formed was ugly, it was deformed, it was asymmetrical. And so he got a team of people to come and pray over the lake. And after one hour of praying, focusing their prayer on the lake, after one hour, the lake water produced beautiful crystals. So he tried another experiment. Dr. Emoto put distilled water in the center of a room of a prayer meeting. The more people came to prayer, the more beautiful the crystal samples he collected. And you speak loving words to the baby in the womb, and you, and you let the baby listen to, or the fetus listen to classical music, wonderful, peaceful music. It will affect the intelligence and the development of the child. Even by looking at happy, cheerful photographs of babies, it affects the psychology of the fetus on the inside. And that is why for many of the women who are pregnant, your friends always give you nice posters or other children to look at. What I say concerning a staff, or what I think concerning church workers or a whole department, it somehow affects not only the spiritual atmosphere, it affects the development of the department or the development of the staff as a minister. I found if I think badly about the staff, he keeps making the same mistake. I make worse mistake. When I speak encouraging words, and when I think well, and sometimes this is where my wife is a great help. She comes to me and says, Kong, you may not say it, but you don't think well. Say, so you don't think well. And, and according to this theory, how we think affects the person because our words, our thoughts, what we visualize, what we picture in our mind, what we listen with our ears, affect our soul and our physical surrounding. Now, whether Dr. Masaru Emoto's work is genuine science or some hocus-pocus pseudo-scientific theory, it has some truth to it. Because it's very much in line with what the Bible says concerning our human heart and the realm of the Holy Spirit. Oh, come on, let's give the Lord a big hand. How many preach today, all right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, you want to clap? Let's give the Lord a big hand. It's good to know, huh? Isn't it? Every once in a while, what the scientific community discover, hey, it's in line with the Word of God. The power of the Holy Spirit will work according to the extent you're willing to speak positively and you're willing to think positively. You think the right thoughts, you speak the right words. Now, when you read the books of successful people, even if they're non-Christians, even if they're new ages, they too talk about the power of thoughts, the power of visions and dreams, how you must believe in your dream, and how you got to speak and confess. I mean, just read some of the books by the, some of the richest or successful leaders in the world. Bill Gates, you know, Stephen Covey, people like uh, Warren Buffett, his new books that just got out. I mean, you find they all believe in the same things that the Bible has been teaching for thousands of years. So what makes us different? Well, we are different because we have advantage. These people believe in the power of the universe. We believe in the power of the creator of the universe, the source of our authority and our anointing and power in the world. Come on, give the Lord a big clap. 